It's five or six fifty-two. KTRS Big Five Fifty. Jay Kanzler, Kelly Jackson. Yes. McGraw Millhaven is on a Kelly Conway TV radio timeout. So <laughs> she's uh, on a time. Yeah. Well, she's back on. I, I see. know, but yes. but McGraw's on one. But we do have Karen Travers, ABC News correspondent mm-hmm. from the White House. Good morning, Karen. Good morning. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and DHS Secretary John Kelly are headed to Mexico today. Yes, a trip that the White House says is not a cleanup visit uh, because the relationship between the U.S. and Mexico is healthy, it's robust, and the press secretary even used the word phenomenal yesterday. But there are a lot of big differences right now. Uh, First is, of course, the border wall. The president insists that Mexico pays for it. Mexico's president said that is not happening. And now these new guidelines on deportation, uh, the Trump administration saying that any undocumented immigrants that are deported will go to Mexico, even if they're not originally from Mexico. They could be from Central America or South America. The Mexican foreign minister said yesterday they don't have to accept unilateral decisions like this from another country. Uh, So this visit by Secretaries Tillerson and Kelly comes as there's just another controversy brewing between the two nations on a very, very big issue. How does this press secretary justify using phrases like a phenomenal relationship (laughs) when we all know, we all see that nothing could be further from the, the truth? Yeah, you know, I guess if you want to paint a rosy picture on things, I think, though, acknowledging that there is some strain between the two countries is required here. I don't think anybody would look at this, uh, even with the most partisan eye, and say that relationship is phenomenal right now when you had the Mexican president canceling a visit to the White House last month because of a tweet that President Trump wrote about who was going to pay for that border wall. Um, And... To that point, um, is there any realistic hope that the president of Mexico will ever acquiesce and, and agree to paying for the wall? I don't see that happening. I mean, he's under immense domestic pressure on this. You know, everybody has their own constituents to worry about. And even when Peña Nieto said he was coming to the White House, there was a lot of uh, protests down there saying he should not do this, not when Donald Trump is speaking the way he is about Mexico and and what was seen as bullying uh, of the Mexican president. And ultimately, that could have been the reason why he cancels the trip, too, of just giving into the domestic pressure and wanting to show that he's taking a firm stand. So I don't see how. Now, I say that, and who knows what types of trade retaliation methods could be done. Nobody wants to get into a trade war with a country that you share a large border with, uh, a very critical trade partner. But we're not close to that just yet. Right. One nice thing about the so-called press um, is that you give us opportunities uh, for insight that don't come out of the press secretary's mouth. Or <laughs> what realistically can be expected from this trip to Mexico by Secretary of State Tillerson and uh, Secretary Kelly? I think it's really more of a uh, establishing of a relationship. You know, you, we have that canceled visit, so Trump and Peña Nieto have not actually met. So you send down somebody like Rex Tillerson and John Kelly, two respected uh, officials in the administration, to say, like, let's get past the rhetoric. And, you know, we don't have to everybody stand in their corners here. And let's just talk about ways we can cooperate. Those are always the things that uh, two countries want to come out of meetings. You know, everybody wants to talk about the controversies, but let's say here are the things that we do agree on and what we can work forward on. Sure. On another matter, um, President Trump uh, reversed the Obama administration, uh, its executive order on transgender students yesterday. So these were actually, it wasn't an executive order. It was guidelines from the Obama administration. No, that's okay. I just want to make that clear. It was guidelines that the Obama administration issued last May. They've actually been temporarily blocked since August because of a federal judge in Texas. And the Trump administration withdrew those guidelines. Um, They did not put in place their own new ones that reverse it. They withdrew from the guidelines. So now public schools are no longer required to allow transgender students to use the bathroom of their choice. 
the Trump administration says this is an issue that states and local school districts should be deciding with input from parents and students and teachers, not something that's dictated from the federal government in Washington. Uh, this you know, certainly has been met with applause from conservative groups and a lot of consternation from some uh, transgender activist groups who say that this is going to make people more susceptible to bullying or, uh, you know, criticism. But I think it was also interesting to look at perhaps the differences between what we heard from the Education Department and the Justice Department. Betsy DeVos, in her statement, was focusing on students. She said there's a responsibility to protect every student, and that's a moral obligation. Jeff Sessions, in his statement, said that the Justice Department has to enforce the law. And that was the key question, is whether or not the Obama administration could even do this under federal Title IX guidelines. I there's been reporting that there was a, a, a skirmish between Sessions and DeVos on this, and ultimately Sessions uh, overruled her. So we'll see where it goes from here. In, in actuality, the decision's likely to be clarified by an mm-hmm. upcoming Supreme Court case that's making its way th- um, to the justices. Yeah, there's a case uh, of a transgender student, Gavin Grimm, who wants to use the boys' bathroom. And he was allowed to use the boys' bathroom in 2014, but the school said that there had been some complaints. So the Virginia School Board uh, said he had to use the bathroom of his biological birth gender. It's making its way through the courts. The lower court has ruled in favor of this student, but it's right now on hold, and we expect that to get to the Supreme Court sometime late next month. So that could be a landmark decision, or they could just rule specifically on this particular state. But right now, you know, as the court was considering this, it was in the guise of these other Obama administration guidelines. Now that's a little different because they're no longer in place. Right. Karen Travers, always a pleasure. ABC News correspondent from the White House, thank you for joining us. Meet me. <laughs> And now 